Good morning, everybody. My name is Fiona Farr from the University of Limerick, and um, I'm here this morning to give you an update on the Digital Literacies Project, or as we now call it, the Digi Languages Project, which is a little bit more catchy than our original 10-word title or something like that. So we're at the end of um, a full calendar year for the project, really, and it's been a very busy year, but um, we think it's also been a very productive year in terms of what we've done um, on the project. And that's largely due to uh, a great group of people that we've got working on the project across a number of partner institutions. So there are six partners involved um, in this project. The uh, Limerick partners, as we call them on the top here, from the Shannon Consortium institutions. And then we have um, NUI Galway and two Dublin institutions involved as well, Dublin Institute of Technology and Dublin City University. And that gives us a nice geographical spread around the country as well um, in terms of the uh, project, the dissemination, the integration and the development. So just to give you a little bit to remind, particularly for those of you who might be new to the project, to give you a very simple um, overview of what the project is about, the idea behind this project is to develop a framework for the enhancement of digital literacies specifically for language learning and teaching in the Irish higher education context. And once that framework had been developed, and it now has, the curation and the development of a number of supporting resources to help students and teachers to develop those literacies um, within their own teaching and learning contexts. So um, a number of open educational resources. So far, the first, I suppose, in, in my own head, I always think about the project in three phases. The first phase of the project was very much about um, needs analysis and research to see what was needed among the stakeholder groups. So we spent the first three or four months of the project at the beginning of um, the last, uh, last calendar year talking to our students, talking to teachers, seeing where the gaps were, looking at some of the curricula that are in place in the third level institutions, and also talking to colleagues um, internationally. As a result of that consultation and research, we have been um, building the portal to host the activities, and the design and the development of that portal is ongoing. Hopefully the panel have an, had an opportunity to have a look at it. It's still very much under development, but has moved um, quite a lot in terms of its development since we last spoke. We have had a number of national events. Uh, last June, we had an open educational resource fest, which was here in Dublin. And we had about 45 participants from right across the country, language teachers, language tutors, those interested um, in teaching languages. And they are a group of people who, many of whom have now become part of our content development group. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about content development in a few moments. So the second phase of the project from June really, or, or July until December, was very much focused on content development. So as part of our project, we are curating and developing quite a lot of content across a range of six languages for two groups of users, teachers and students, language teachers and language students. That content development is ongoing and will be. Um, not just to the end of the project, we see this as, as a much longer term um, initiative. We've also started the piloting um, and the evaluation of some of those resources and the portal um, pre-Christmas, but most of that piloting and evaluation is happening now in phase three of the project, along with the um, finalization of the technical development of the portal and the uh, localization project around the Irish language. Um, we have been having uh, ongoing meetings with stakeholders within institutions showcasing the portal and we've had a huge number um, of dissemination activities. This is something that we've been very conscious of, not just nationally but internationally um, at a number of different events and I'll mention some of those later. So coming back to the content development, at the moment we have developed approximately 500 hours of content across, uh, that's not per language, sorry, that's in total, across the three themes on the portal. So um, if I were a student or a teacher wanting to use that, it would, it would be quite substantial in terms of what's in there. And we plan to develop quite a lot more over the course of the coming months. Um, and that's taken us really quite a lot of time over the last six month period. Uh, the content has been sourced from a number of different um, 
fora, I suppose, our workshops, our Open Educational Resource Fest, students, student teachers and language teachers, um, and we've also employed a number of people as content developers um, for the project and they report to the plenary group members. We have developed and obviously are uh, maintaining an activity database, um, and this is something again which is quite important for um, the sustainability of the project post-funded uh, period. Um, the project website has been developed and the portal, so with lots of help files, frequently asked questions, etc. Now, one of the things that we were conscious of over the last two presentations that we've had with the um, International Evaluation Panel, we've had some really useful feedback which has helped us to direct the activities um, in a way which I think has been to, um, to the advantage of the project. So, um, in general, we've had um, some nice positive feedback. We did have to grapple quite a lot with the structure of the portal and, and the project and the framework because of the number of target user groups and the number of languages, uh, six languages and two target groups, um, as I mentioned already. So we've done quite a lot, I think, to simplify that. It's simplified visually. We now have multiple access points on the portal. Um, the content is searchable. Um, lots of filters for language level, etc. And I think the piloting and evaluation between now and the end of April will also help us to refine that structure even further so that it becomes as user friendly um, as it can be by the end of the funded period of the project. Um, we've had a lot of student involvement, and this is only growing um, at this point in time. So students were very much involved in the initial research stage. They have been involved in the um, piloting that has taken place so far. And student teachers are a particular area of interest for us and a growing area of interest, actually. This is something that we hadn't quite anticipated um, would be as beneficial to the project as we are now learning it will be. So we have a number of teacher education programs and the participants on those teacher education programs have become really valuable resources for not just for piloting and evaluating, but for content development as well. Um, and lots of those types of teacher education programs in language certainly will have modules around things like materials development. Um, and this fits really nicely. So we're getting some nice content back from students on those kinds of programs. And we will be not just at national level, but internationally as well. Um, and a focus on staff development has been um, very important as well, and we've been linking in with a number of other projects, and we've been doing quite a lot nationally with colleagues. So at this point, um, Sinead is going to take you on a little walkthrough um, on the portal. We had some backup slides just in case that didn't work, but we're, we're now going to switch out of this um, and just take you through as a little demo. Yep. Off you go, Sinead. One of the key asks that we had uh, wanted from the project was a very clean and simple interface that would easily direct both the students and the teachers um, to their own pathways and their own activities. So within the teacher interface, we've split that between CPD activities and activities that they can use in the classroom. And then for the students then, it just brings them directly then to the navigation panel here at the top, which breaks down into the three themes or the map interface at the bottom, which will bring them directly then to that subcategory. Um, each of the map um, will provide a little piece of information and a link then to bring them to that subcategory. If you take them to one of the uh, digital literacies there, for example, um, the hypertext literacy. This details what a hypertext liter literacy is in English and then further down um, towards the end of the, the activity, you can see that it also details that in the different languages. So that will um, help the student become familiar with the terminology um, in their own language, in the target language. Then within the activity, then we also have a little tables which directs it to other activities that will incorporate using hypertext literacies which the students and the sorry the, t the students can perform on their own or can be used as, for teachers within the classroom. So, for example, here there's a student accommodation one, which helps students find accommodation um, for their mobility programs in uh, year two. So, this would have a number of videos that would help them then with their listening skills um, and. Um, within their own language on finding student accommodation um, on their Erasmus program. So students particularly like this particular act, um, activity because it helped them 
become familiar with um, their destination within it, through the target language. And if they struggled listening to the, t to the activity, there's also links then that will bring them to uh, helping them with their listening and viewing strategies. So that is how the three work packages integrate with each other um, within the activities that are useful for students uh, during their language program. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's just a very quick demo of one of the activities. Um, the, the three themes that we have for the development of the content are, um, sorry, there we go. So transitions and contexts, language skills and practices, and digital literacies. And as you'll have seen, the introductory sections to all of the activities are in English, and then the activities themselves are language specific, um, which we think is quite a nice model um, as well. So I'm just going to... Here we go. Okay, so just to talk a little bit about um, national impact and the type of impact that we're starting to have already and we're continuing to work on. So um, we had our national survey and that um, allowed us already to make quite a number of stakeholders aware of the project and the project aims and outcomes. We have an implementation strategy across the six institutions and any other partner institutions. We've run a number of workshops and our OER Fest. We have three further workshops organized um, in March and April for, April for um, teachers and tutors. And we have a number of walkthrough clinics um, which we're organizing for students to pilot the programs within the institutions. We've done a lot of dissemination in terms of conference presentations. Um, we're linguists, we like to talk, so that's what we do. Um, in total, we've had, or we will have by the end of the project, um, presented approximately 25 papers at national and international conferences. We've already had one publication uh, from the project and we have two more publications which are in preparation at the moment. And we've been very careful to try and find a balance between um, practice or applied oriented conferences and more research focused conferences. So we've also worked quite closely with professional development organizations, so the French Teachers Association, the German Teachers Association, English Language Teachers Association, um, as well as the more research oriented um, conferences which I've mentioned. So I'm not going to go through all of those in details, but you can see them there. Um, so just thinking about um, where, we're, where we're at at the moment, um, we're working on, obviously, our, our, we're having regular and ongoing meetings. We have quite a nice um, structure around the project at the moment. We have a plenary group with representation from each of the institutions. We have an international advisory panel with 10 members from right across the world. And we have now got quite a strong content development group as well. And those groups work quite well together. Um, dissemination, as I said, has been happening throughout the, prog or throughout the project. The integration into curriculum is one of the things that is our strongest pillar in terms of the sustainability of the project and the exploitation of the materials. So at the moment, a full review so far to date, a full review of all of the language modules um, in DCU has happened to integrate learning outcomes associated with the project. Um, at the University of Limerick, we're just about to embark on a full review of all of the language modules. And when I say all, we're talking about approximately 150 modules in each of the larger institutions, certainly across all of the languages. So we're just about to embark on um, a large project to map our language modules onto the Common European Framework of Reference, which gives us a lovely opportunity to integrate learning outcomes in relation to the Digi Languages project as well. Um, and there are lots of other things that some of the partners from the other institutions might also want to mention in a moment. Um, the on online platform will be um, available as an open educational resource. We have made the platform available to some colleagues already within our own institutions to get some feedback from them and also to allow them to um, get a sense of what's involved so that they might be in a position to contribute some um, content that relates to their own teaching as well. And the localization project into the Irish language has already begun, um, and that will be completed by the end of the project. So for um, 2017, for the remainder of the, the project, I suppose, obviously the, the project management is an ongoing activity, um, research and development, piloting activities in the partner institutions, uh, data analysis, redesigning selected components of the portal, curriculum development. Content development is ongoing. As I say, this is never going to come to an end, we would hope. Um, 
the localization project is, is very important for the Irish speaking community, um, as well as the development of Irish language activities, and they're two separate work packages. We are planning to launch the portal at a national level over the summer, well, pre-summer break, sometime in June or July. Um, we also have committed, we're meeting on the 3rd of March, I think, and the purpose of that meeting is to start formulating a written sustainability and exploitation plan for the project. Um, we're very lucky in that Professor Francoise Bland, who is one of our project uh, team members, is, um, has published widely on the area of sustainability, and um, we've got some nice models and frameworks that we're going to use to have a written sustainability and governance plan around the project. Um, and obviously the ongoing project evaluation is, um, is important in terms of what we're doing for the last phase. The international panel um, have been very, very supportive, not just in terms of giving feedback, but also in terms of disseminating some of the work that we're doing. Two or three of them have also come back to say, can we pilot some of the activities with our students? So um, we've had comments like, it looks like you've been doing a great job, congratulations. Um, I, I quite like this one. There's a, a similar project about to start in the Belgian context, um, and we're going to work very closely with them. Fanny says, uh, we'll be starting a similar type of project for Belgian teachers in the next week or so. I'll promote your project as the perfect example to follow and get inspiration from. So it's nice to hear that. We don't see it as being quite perfect yet, but <laughs> we hope we're on the, on the right road. Um, I think I've spoken about most of these things already, the shorter term um, sustainability organizational practices. The longer term sustainability, I'd just like to finish up um, by saying that there are a number of um, actions that we've already implemented into the project which we think will allow the project to be sustainable over a longer period of time. There are two things. There's the exploitation of the materials and the use of the materials, and the sustainability of that is very much, we feel, through curriculum integration, and that's why we focused so much on that at this point in the project. Um, and the other part of it is the content development. And as I said, um, a nice door has been opened to us in terms of the content development. A part of us, apart from the plenary group being committed to the ongoing content development, um, we have a number of teacher education programs which are interested in contributing to the ongoing content development. And the international advisory group have also um, that, that has also suggested, or individuals on the international advisory group have also begun to suggest some activities that might help us to sustain it on a longer term basis. Thank you. <laughs>